Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to talk about starting with training for overweight or deconditioned individuals and progressing through a series of economical programs to re-establish you as the athlete that all humans are. This is the rough idea of how my programs all line up. The idea is to take people from training for overweight or deconditioned individuals. Think somebody who has been bedridden for several months to years, needs to learn to stand back up, and then goes through a series of programs that can all be done at home for the least amount of money that have the absolute greatest amount of benefit for reestablishing human movement patterns. We call this program TOI in our shorthand, training for overweight or deconditioned individuals, and this runs in four week cycles. People who are running this call this the sawtooth progression, because it starts every week, it gets a little bit harder, it gets easy for the next cycle, goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Most people that we've had run TOI, run it for five cycles, which is about 20 weeks. But this program is specifically written for people who have been bedridden. I was once injured so bad that I couldn't stand up for six months. And this was the program that we wrote in order to help me learn to stand up again. If you can't stand up, you cannot progress and build athletic potential. The most important thing is standing up. Most people skip the standing up phase of rehabilitation and reestablishing strong standing structure. And they try to jump into something much more hardcore too soon. And that's where people get injured because they're not standing equally in both legs. TOI can be done with a bunch of different equipment. The goal is to get people to start training. It could be a water jug and a baseball bat. Most people will start with a dumbbell and a baseball bat. Three basic movements, a deadlift pattern, a squat pattern, a press pattern. And the fourth movement is the baseball bat pattern, which is a shield cast, moving a weight around your head that causes people to stand all the way back up and it helps rehab people's shoulders. Most people have shoulder injuries. Almost everybody in the modern world has fairly trash shoulders when it comes to stability, so that needs to be in your program right away. So most people will run this program about four times to five times, but I have had people run this program as many as nine times or running nine months. Every time you go from one cycle to the next cycle to the next cycle, you will change a variable. Your dumbbell will get heavier. Most people will benefit from using a competition adjustable kettlebell eventually. A lot of people will start at four kilogram to six kilogram. Those have to be bought as individual weights. It is best if you buy competition bells because they are the most useful for everything else in the future. You can use kettlebells from Walmart, but you're kind of just wasting money by not getting the good equipment you should get. Good equipment is always better than cheap equipment, but available equipment is better than no equipment. Usually after people run this program, the goal is to get them to run intro to kettlebell. Intro to kettlebell is a bunch of preparatory drills that get people familiar with holding on to kettlebells and moving them between hands. For most people, moving things from hand to hand is actually fairly difficult because most people have one good hand and one bad hand, almost everybody in the world, and changing hands in a bunch of different ways is fairly difficult for most people. This program also helps people learn to do the rack position well. If you build a strong foundation with your rack position, how you hold a kettlebell, it transfers to everything else you will ever do. It will make your dumbbelling better, it will make everything you do in the gym better, it will make everything better. Kettlebell rack position is the defining thing that helps people learn to stand up better. By doing rack position with one kettlebell, the side effect is you build a stronger core and you build it equally on both sides of your spine. Most people have trouble with one side of their spine being stronger than another, it manifests as back pain. So by running intro to kettlebell, people end up with a much more symmetrical spine. 
That puts them in less pain. That means they are more likely to want to train. Deconditioned individuals, learn to stand up. Intro to kettlebell, stand up, get good at rack position, learn to move from hand to hand. Then we go to the swings program. This is where people without a huge injury history tend to come in. We call this program one, program two, program three, program four, program five. If you do not have a bunch of injuries, people come in at the swings program. Think of kettlebell swings as endurance deadlifts that you can do at your house. A deadlifting pattern is part of everybody's athletic training. The higher level athlete you are, probably the more important this becomes. The problem with doing barbell deadlifts is that they're expensive. You have to have a place to do them. If you live in a fifth floor walk up in New York City or a flat in London or a split level in LA, barbelling is not something you're going to be able to do quickly and easily. Swings, you can drag a kettlebell upstairs, you can do it and you can run a program for a very long period of time. Usually people will start with swings if you're fairly healthy, 16K. The classic was 16, 24, 32. But the more weights you do this with, the better it gets. The second you add in a 20 and a 28, it gets even better. And if you were to add in an 18, a 22, a 26, and a 30, it gets even better. Most people try to skip to the end and that's why they fail, they get hurt, or they never really get what they want out of training. More weights means more opportunities to learn to do it right. Professional athletes spend eight to 12 years building their technique. The more weights you do, the longer the program takes, the better your adaptation becomes, the more experience you get, the better the overall outcome. Oftentimes, if people are coming from TOI or ITK, they may start with an eight kilogram and do eight, 10, 12, 14 before they get to that. Or they might start with 12 and add 12 and 14 above that. Usually the same time that you run swings, you could run swings as a 10 minute program, a 15 minute program, a 20 minute program, or a 30 minute program, the one that people are most likely to run is a 10 minute program because it's short, it allows you to do it. The longer the workout, the less likely people are to do it. Oftentimes swings is combined with clean and press. Endurance hip snap, clean and press with one hand means putting cross-body stabilization on, and once again, learning to stand up and extend the spine and extend the shoulders. Most people in the modern world are rounded by learning a kettlebell press. People regain a semi-decent standing posture very quickly. Usually five weights is good. Same thing, that could be 16, 18, 20, 22, 24 at a minimum. But many, if you're a larger male looking for more athleticism, your goal would be minimum 32 kilogram. Most ladies without injury will probably start eight, 10, 12, 14, and 16. If you have more weights or you are of smaller frame, that should be eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. 12 is fairly hefty for many females. Uh, that's 26.2 pounds, if I remember that correctly. But getting this weight and this weight is very hard, and you need to have some specialized equipment to get that. An adjustable kettlebell plus a plastic base. We have videos on all of that stuff. We'll drop in product names for those things right there. And getting eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 is the best path for most people moving forward. If you're coming from intro to kettlebell, and you have a four and a six, then that can get stacked on, on top of that. Swings and clean and press can be run on the same day because usually that times out is 10 minutes and this maxes at 25 minutes. So that still fits inside of an hour. Time control means that people are more likely to do it. After this, learn to stand up, move from hand to hand, get good at rack position, extend the shoulder, extend the spine, cross body stabilization, endurance hip snap. Then we get into Turkish Get Up Master Program. This is a five level program and it should be run 
with at least three weights, which means you would run at least 15 cycles. And this should be lighter than your clean and press. It should be lighter. Clean and press maxes out at five reps. It is a strength protocol. TGU Master runs for 30 second intervals. That means that this is more of an endurance style. So this should probably be 60% of whatever this weight is, roughly. It can be different than that, but 60% is a great starting point. You would run this with at least five levels through three weights, that's 15 cycles. Getting up off of the ground is a basic human skill, and if you are not good at it, think of yourself at a low level of fail for your athleticism. If you cannot stand all the way up, endurance hip snap, and get off of the ground, you don't have the best foundation you could. The goal is to have the best foundation possible for the least money, be able to do it in a controlled amount of time, and be able to do it without needing to travel to a gym. All of that's covered here. After TGU Master comes squat program and deck squat program, getting all the way down to the ground, learning not to die when you hit the ground and roll, and get back up, and then that leads to the snatch program. Now you have all of your core fundamentals in there. Learning to stand up, moving from hand to hand rack position. If you were to think about this as barbelling, it would be deadlift, clean and press, some type of get up. Usually that falls into a sit up family for most athletes, squats and snatches. Now you have all of your fundamental athletic movement patterns that you would train with Olympic lifting, that you would train in CrossFit, that you would train in any type of professional or semi-professional format all done at home for the least amount of money. After you get through all of these fundamentals, then you break off and now you get two other forms. You get kettlebell metcons, which are brutal, which is taking all of the other things and combining them together just with different numbers in unpredictable ways for unpredictable amounts of time. But we do metcon after you have your foundation built. Oftentimes people try to do metcon before they can do the other things effectively and that costs them a lot. And they tend not to get very far in training because they tend to fry out or get very, very hurt. Kettlebell Metcon is an infinite idea and you can do it forever. So if you have kettlebells from here, 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 you know exactly what to do. Kettlebell Metcon becomes something you can do forever. If you have a competition adjustable kettlebell, you have this forever. Right about here is also where you get into double kettlebelling. We tend not to start double kettlebelling sooner because most people benefit from holding one kettlebell because they get more core contraction from holding a heavy weight on one side of their body and cross body stabilizing. Most of the things you do in the real world in a shop setting, in a construction setting, or in a farming setting are some type of cross body stabilization, which should all be covered by all of these other things. Double bell starts to turn it into a Hercules program, as I like to call it, because now we are mimicking barbell, but we're doing it once again in a way that doesn't require barbell platform, and you can still do it inside of spaces, in cities, you can do it inside of houses, if you're in, Montana and there's three feet of snow outside, you can still do that inside the house without having to go outside and freeze to death. The other program that people tend to run is the club programs. Somewhere after intro to kettlebell, you can start to run basis of strength. Basis of strength is two hands on a club and this is a massive program, but this is all rotation. So when we think of training, kettlebells are cheap, they're able to be done everywhere. Clubs help people learn to move even better because most human movement is based on rotation. Most tools are levers and you should be very good at controlling levers. If you do not have a levers in your program, once again, you're probably running at some low level of fail. And if you're doing say Olympic lifting, you need to add something like clubs or mace into the program so that you're doing the most important things that humans do. Humans have thumbs for a reason. It's so that you can hold onto levers. Your shoulder moves and your core combines with your shoulder to swing levers. It is essential human movement. Seven levels with at least three weights is at least 21 cycles. 
And you need to also be able to run single arm club at some point to make sure that your left and your right shoulder and core work equally well on both sides of your body. This is the basic idea of what the training is right now. These things have not been talked about all that much because this is really a five year plan of making videos for me to get through this whole thing. This is where we stand right now is we have all of this stuff generally on the way or done, right? These are the ones that are currently in edit. But if you start here and you run this for five months and you ran this for say four cycles, four months, then you could run this for three years. This could be running for three years and this runs for 15 cycles. We're already at a five year program. The goal is to start for people who have been injured or beat up or who are deconditioned or overweight and to give them a clear path forward on how they can get back to being who they want to be. All humans are athletes. This is the plan to take everybody on the planet with functioning arms and functioning legs and restore them to their athletic condition. If you have if you're missing some limbs or something, then there are slight modifications to this program, but that's beyond the scope of this video. The most important thing is that you pick the right starting point. If you try to start with swings and it doesn't work, you can drop a level, right? Swings and clean and press, it tends to be where a lot of people start, but there are about 200 million people in North America who cannot start here. 180 to 210 million people will be starting here or here. Honestly, most of them are going to be starting here. And then this is the five year plan in order to get people up to where they want to be. This could be 10 years. Once you add this stuff in, this becomes at least 10 years. The point is always to write programs that solve individual problems, that solve specific things and we do this as engineering. We don't have people do anything useless. You should not be spending your time doing useless stuff. If somebody cannot articulate to you the exact reason every piece of your fitness program is there and if it's not tailored for your current level of conditioning or your current level of movement, then that is not a program you should be doing. Training is engineering and it should be an engineered outcome. Everyone is an athlete. Every human is an athlete. We all have the same basic components and operating systems. The problem is most people do not consider themselves athletes because nobody has taught them the way that an athlete has been taught. There are six fundamental things you need to know how to do. You need to get to the six, get to the six. You need a deadlift pattern, a clean and press pattern, getting up off of the ground pattern, a squat pattern, a snatch pattern, and then you need conditioning. All of this stuff also acts as conditioning for most people before you ever get to randomized conditioning. This is all of your throwing patterns and the things that define you as a human. Everybody is an athlete and everybody should be trained as an athlete.